In this video, I wanted to discuss more about the administrators of commands and how you would give them access to certain sites and also certain permissions. And why this is important is, well, first of all, you need to make sure that you do that correctly, following least privilege rules. This is, again, a best practice technique in any system when you shouldn't be giving extra permissions for somebody because that will create security vulnerabilities and then also assign alerts. So this is what this video is all about. Command admins, access control and alerts. If you remember my previous video, we discussed about how easy it is to onboard users. And I mentioned there that even if we create user profiles for everybody in your organization, that doesn't automatically give them access to command. And if you think about it, actually most people should not have access to it. So what gives an user the ability to log into commandovercover.com and start managing your estate? And for that, I will refer back to my user profile here and a drop down that appears when you click on access control role. You'll see you have three options. The default one is member, meaning that this particular user can utilize Vercada Pass, namely Bluetooth and Remote Unlock, but cannot log in to commandovercada.com. If this particular user is actually an admin, maybe somebody from IT or a security personnel, this is where you can actually bump their rights and choose either manager or admin. And at this point, you might be wondering what's the difference between the two of them. There is a detailed breakdown on our documentation page. But in a nutshell, you should be viewing uh, Access Manager as more of a read-only type of role when most of the things that you can do are related to things such as viewing different reports for doors, users, and uh, also provisioning some local users and credentials while an Access Admin has full configuration capabilities of that particular site. And that means modifying door settings, adding, deleting them all together, etc. However, bumping somebody's rights from member to manager or admin doesn't actually make them see anything unless you look through your existing sites and subsites and click manage roles, ticking those boxes to the right under access site admin. So this is very important. Because if you forget to do so, the person will call you up and will say, hey, I logged in, but actually I don't see anything. So in my case, for example, I see everything and I'm able to customize and configure the HQ at San Mateo and all its subsites, while all these other sites are not visible to me. I'm repeating again, the best practice is to always make sure that when you onboard admins, you not just give them the right permission set, but also only tag them to the site or sites that they are supposed to manage and nothing else. There's one more thing I wanted to mention before we look into how we set up alerts, and that is this idea of an organization admin. As you can see here, although I don't have access to these some sites and sites, I can bump my level up, refresh the page and have full control over them. And the reason for that is that if you go back to my user profile, I am marked as an organization admin. From a Vercada point of view, an organization admin has the full keys to the castle and can see and configure everything. The best practice is to have more than one because if you just rely on one organization admin, that person might be uh, off sick, they might be on holiday, maybe they suddenly left the business and they forgot to provision somebody else in their role, so have more than one. However, use this function sparingly. Most admins should not be organization admins. As you can imagine, having this power to provision yourself on different sites, adding, deleting administrators, etc., is something that only a few critical people in within your organization should have. Now that we have spoken about users and their roles, permissions, and sites, Let's look at how easy it is to set up alerts. I show this in other videos as well, but uh, access control alerts actually come together with cameras and sensors in this alert inbox. All I need to do is just select access control as the product type, 
but most likely you're not gonna have a person that's looking at this window all the time and figures out that something is wrong so in order for you to automate these alerts all you need to do is go inside the access control tab click on alerts the plus button and here you'll be able to choose between multiple types a security alert is something that is like a door held open or door forced open event remember you do need vpis and rexes for that plus configure the particular door to send these alerts a device offline quite self-explanatory a door open uh, this is what we call a suspicious entry alert when you still allow people to get in but you do get a notification think about something like somebody's coming into the office after hours or in a certain more secure area access denied lockdown and fire alarm so this is where if you have a fire relay and you have your fire alarm system linked together with access control we're actually able to report and alert anytime that fire alarm goes on so let's click on any of these give it a name click next this is where i can select between doors sites and sub sites filter based on what, what I'm interested in, and furthermore, describe how I want to receive these alerts. Do I want them over email? Do I want them over SMS? Do I want both of them? Who are the recipients? This is actually quite cool because you can actually define other people as well. So you might have maybe admins that don't have too much know-how in setting all this up in commands, so you can actually subscribe them uh, to these alerts. And then also an alert uh, schedule as well. So for example, if you don't want to be alerted, if a uh, door is held open during work hours, but obviously you do want to receive that notification, Saturdays and Sundays, all you need to do is just select those dates.